Hey guys, welcome to another video. Yes, very different, I know. I'm actually showing my face for one set of videos. It's been a while. <laughs> it's good to actually see you guys. Look at that, you can see my face in this one. I feel like in this video, I was uh, I'm gonna talk about, uh, I wanted to show my face and you know, with some like, images and stuff, uh, talking to you guys, like, like I'm pitching a story to Hollywood and stuff. So I like to do this, like showing my face and everything, but, uh, yeah, uh, I know some of you guys miss this kind of style of videos. I might do more, like, in-person videos like I used to, but uh, the audio stuff is just more convenient for me, and it's just better to edit for me. But this one, uh, I'm going to be doing something I've never done before. This is me pitching a rewrite of a film, and that is Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens. I think The Force Awakens isn't a bad movie, but very problematic and doesn't make a lot of sense and just it borrows so many tropes from a new hope and everything um this is me rewriting the whole film uh there are going to be some similarities like last some a lot of the a lot of, a lot of the characters that they brought in that movie is going to be in this film but i'm just changing a lot of story elements and just things happen to certain characters character traits uh yeah this is just me if i was a story executive or one of the writers of the force awakens this is how i would do it this is just my opinion again like if you think the story is terrible and you're like oh god that's even worse well that's that's just the way you guys think uh hope you just have fun with it and if you guys like this maybe i'll do a sequel video uh if this one you know gets the likes and the views but so yeah this is me rewriting the force awakens <laughs> Um, so the first thing I'm doing with this movie is I'm taking out Rey as a character. She is not going to be the main character of this film. The main character is going to be Finn, played by John Boy Aga. So the movie is going to start very similar to how The Force Awakens started. With them on the planet and Kylo Ren murdering these innocent people. And Finn, a stormtrooper, is witnessing all of it. And so, uh, like a person gets like shot and then puts the blood on his helmet and he's realizing why am I here why am I doing this I can't handle this I'm in way over my head and I want this to be his first mission because if he was a stormtrooper who's done many missions killing innocent people it doesn't make a lick of sense why he just all of a sudden wants to be good this I want to be his first mission he's very young he's a young stormtrooper he's been in training finally he is out doing a real mission and he can't do it and then I want to, like, after they get back on the starship, Finn, like, takes his helmet off, takes a deep breath, and then I want, like, a little mini flashback of him as a kid being taken by the First Order. Took him as a little child, like, maybe six, seven years old, away from his family, and then training to him to be a stormtrooper. Very quick little flashback, but instantly gets you connected to Finn as a character that he was just a child that was taken in, and raised to be a killer and a soldier for the First Order. And we also get, like, Poe Dameron and, you know, BB-8 and stuff. Some of that stuff is pretty similar. And he gets captured by Kylo Ren. We get the same kind of torture scene. Maybe less, no no comedy. I like that stuff where he's like, you duck, I duck, I duck. No, no. None of that comedy thing. Make it really dark. Make Kylo Ren a very intimidating force of a character. We also get like Captain Phasma and stuff. She'll have a lot more to do a little bit in this in this movie. And Finn finds out that they held a pilot captive and he's going to help break him out. Just like the whole beginning of Force Awakens, he's gonna break Finn. Is Finn no, Finn's gonna break Poe out and they're gonna escape on a TIE fighter. And again, all of that is gonna be completely the same. He's gonna say it, my name is FN something, and he's like, I'm gonna call you Finn and stuff. And he's like, Oh, cool, I like that name. And then he's just like, you never had a name? He's like, I don't remember my name and stuff. And <laughs> then we get like a cool, like, you know, chase sequence, them trying to escape and everything. And their ship gets damaged, but they escape uh, the First Order and stuff. And then Kylo Ren asks Captain Phasma, like has a conversation with her about what happened and who broke him out. She, find, she finds out that it was a stormtrooper. There's something wrong with him. He's not acting like other stormtroopers. So Kylo Ren sends Captain Phasma by herself to go get Finn back. 
And at first he doesn't give a shit. He's like, oh, why should I care? It's one stormtrooper. But uh, he has been briefed on the mission and uh, the Death Stars they have created to destroy the planets. And she says to him, to Kylo, that if he goes to the Resistance and tells them these plans, it can destroy their whole operation. And Kylo's like, ah, oh, shit. And he's like, I don't want to tell General Hux that. So he sends Count Phasma just on herself to go get Finn, kill Poe Dameron, and bring Finn back. That is her mission. So Finn and Poe, uh, you know, start talking a little bit about each other and stuff. Then they find out that their ship is damaged and they need a land on a nearby planet to get either their ship fixed or hijack another ship. So they land on a desert planet of Jakku. Yes, no ray. They land on this, like, planet full of scum and scavengers. And you get to see all these cool creatures with practical effects. All that I loved in Force Awakens and stuff. And they go to a... They find a little pub and stuff. And they have a little drink. And then we get a whole... Con just a whole scene of just the two of them talking with each other. Uh, Finn and Poe talking. Like, that's going to be the heart of the film. Is the bromance between Poe Dameron and Finn. Uh, Finn talks to uh, Poe about what he had to do during his training with the First Order, but they also, like, conditioned his mind to forget a lot of his past. He doesn't know who his mom and his dad are. He has no idea anything about his life outside of the First Order and being trained as a stormtrooper. He literally, he literally goes into details of how fucking crazy the First Order is and how they have to like, almost brainwash you to think you have no other life but to be a soldier for the First Order. Like, he doesn't remember his name, his mom. They, he's like, he doesn't remember a thing. And Finn, and then Poe feels so bad for him. He really wants to help him and stuff. And he kind of, he's more of the comedic side. He tries to joke around a little bit. And he talks about, he's like, oh, I thought my life was bad. I went to pilot school and aced everything. And haha, ha, things have been great for me. <laughs> and um, he talks about how he was like a, a great pilot and everything and stuff. And he's like, oh, cool. And then they instantly have this, like, friendship connection and stuff. And just, you feel the chemistry between the two of them. So, Poe says to Finn that, he says, I'm going to bring you to uh, General Leia. Leia. Leia Solo, or General Leia Organa and stuff. She's the leader of the Resistance, and she can help you. You tell her all the plans that the First Order is planning to destroy these planets. And she can maybe help you find your family, your parents, your, your home. She can maybe help you remember what your life was. Finn wants that very much. He wants to go home. He wants freedom from the First Order. So the two of them, we get this really cool little scene where they find like a spacecraft full of all these like scavengers and stuff. And then they we get this like really cool like break-in scene and they're going to steal the ship. Uh, it's almost like a little fight sequence. They like fight all these like scavengers off and they just like steal their ship and they blast out of space it's pretty fucking cool it's a pretty awesome scene and then we go to kylo ren and he's talking to snoke who's like again that big projection of snoke and kylo is you know he's still like conflicted that he's not this like powerful sith lord like darth vader and then snoke talks a little more in depth about how he's very weak-minded and he he's not he'll never be as powerful as vader if he still has, like, love in him. And he says, your love for your family and love for your past is still blinding you. And we get a little more, like, that mental manipulation, Snoke, with Kylo Ren. And then we even get a little bit of training. We get that little bit of force training. Like, Snoke is training Kylo Ren to use more darker force powers. He's even teaching him to try to use the lightning force and stuff. You get to actually see real training with Snoke and Kylo Ren. In this movie, which is something I've always wanted to see. <laughs> and then we go into space where, again, Poe and Finn are talking. I love conversations in Star Wars, funny dialogue, uh, character moments. And we learn, like, private moments between the two of them. And then it's all interrupted by a spaceship who's chasing them, and it's Captain Phasma. She is locked onto their ship, and we get this, like, really badass, like, uh chase sequence kind of like the one in attack of clones with jango fan obi-wan it's really awesome chase sequence through space and stuff and it's gonna be awesome it's gonna be really cool but eventually because poe is one of the greatest pilots ever he eventually loses her and he says there are a lot of people after us we need to get to leia asap let's go 
Then it cuts right back to Kylo Ren doing some more intense training, crazy stuff, crazy moves with the lightsaber and stuff, and Snoke just egging him on, telling him that, you know, go harder, go harder, use the dark side of the Force. <laughs> then it's all interrupted by General Hux. We get General Hux now. And then Kyle's like, what do you want? And then he's just like, um, our plans are ready for the attack. We're going to attack in 24 hours and blah, 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 blah. And Kylo Ren's like, okay. And then he's like, he's like, uh, I heard there's like something happening and we're missing a few stormtroopers. And Kyle's like, that's none of your business. Go back to work. And then General Hux is like, careful, I outrank you and stuff. He's like, I'm just as more important to Snoke than you are. You're just a dimwit with a lightsaber. I actually have real knowledge of the world and battle strategies. And Kylo's like, okay, bye. <laughs> and then we finally get uh, to Poe and Finn. They reach Princess Leia. Leia Organa. We get to see Carrie Fisher in this. And Finn is going to tell her all the plans of what the First Order's planning and stuff. And you get to meet uh, Han Solo and Chewbacca. And yes, in this version, Han and Leia are still together. Han didn't abandon her and just go be the Han that he was. No, he's now a general. He leads the First Order with her. He's got his trusty seed, uh, Chewbacca and stuff. And Finn talks to them about what he's been through. And Leia has very deep sympathies for him and everything. And Han does too. And then they reveal that their son, Ben Solo, is Kylo Ren. Big, this is like the first big reveal, and it's a shock to uh, Poe Dameron and Finn. It's in the private of just these four, these five, well, really. <laughs> and they talk about what happened to him. We get the story of Ben, that Luke Skywalker trained him, and then he turned against Luke. Luke sensed the dark side, but Luke never tried to kill him. He tried to guide him. He tried to guide him because he was very a arrogant and angry and stuff. And Ben thought of him as a lousy teacher and that he was holding him back. And then eventually Snoke came along and manipulated Ben to kill all of Luke Skywalker's students and even Luke Skywalker himself. But he was no match for Luke. But Ben escaped with Snoke and Snoke's been training him ever since. And Luke has been traveling all around the galaxy, finding more Jedi, trying to rebuild, rebuild the school that he once lost by his own nephew and Luke. Luke is not a grumpy piece of shit like he is in Last Jedi. He's a good, strong, powerful Jedi who is still trying to do things right and rebuild his own Jedi temple. And she says, and then Leia says, if you help us, Finn, Luke could help you. Luke is very strong with the Force and she says, you have a lot of damage done to your brain and to your memories. She says, Luke could help you with that. He's very strong with the Force. He can do things that many people can't do with the Force. And he could help you, and he could help you find your family. And Finn says, I would like that very much. And she says, but I need you to help fight with us. If you fight with us, I promise you, you will find your home again. And he says, I'm in. Let's do it. <laughs> and then we get all the plans set up with uh, Han and everyone and the whole resistance and they find out what their plan is with the death star all these death stars blowing up all these planets destroying a lot of first order troops and stuff so leia just the, comes up with a plan to send all these armies to all these planets and to find the control systems for all these death stars shut them all down and cripple the first order then we get that awesome scene in force awakens we also get in this one with general hux preparing his troops with his evil speech and stuff really love that scene it's really great it shows how evil and maniacal and over the top he is and i loved it and then we get the reveal of the millennium falcon hanzo was like you got boys are coming with me so poe and finn and chewbacca uh, are going on the millennium falcon we get the reveal of the millennium falcon it's great han solo shows them around, and then they fly off to the planet, the snowy planet you see in the ending of uh, Force Awakens. They go to that planet. It's one of the more desolate planets where one of the uh, uh, one of the devices are to shut down one of the Death Stars. And during this ride, you get to see, you know, Han Solo talk to, 
Poe and Finn about Ben. And he says, you know him as Kylo, but we still know him as Ben. And talks about how he failed him as a father. He doesn't blame any of it on Luke. He blames it on himself. He blames himself as a father and that he failed him. And that maybe if he didn't study Force and Jedi tricks, maybe he could have just been a normal person. Kind of shows that Han is not bitter to like Luke, but bitter to like the Force and Jedis and stuff. And how he thinks it leads to more evil than good and everything. And uh, Finn doesn't really buy it because Finn only sees Kylo Ren as a monster, not as this good kid that Han Solo sees. Because it's through the eyes of a father. Finn doesn't see that. Finn just sees a heartless monster and a murderer. <laughs> but then we get to the planet of the Millennium Falcon. And there's an army waiting for them, though. Yes, there's a huge, there's a pretty big army there because... They knew Finn was going to tell them, and they're all prepared. So we get the Millennium Falcon. He's calling in reinforcements for more starships. And they land on the base where it controls the Death Star. They land. They raid in everything. We get Poe stealing one of the a spa uh, spacecraft. He's flying around, destroying ships and stuff. Reinforcements come in. Big old battles. Talk about something from, like, Rogue One from a Star Wars story. Like, huge... Yeah, 18T walkers, crazy action sequence. And then we get the base of Chewie, Han, and Finn raiding in. And then when they open the door to see where the control system is, who's there waiting for them? Captain Phasma. She's waiting for them. She starts blasting. She shoots Chewbacca. He goes down. Han's like, no. And then she shoots Han's blaster, knocks him right on his ass, his old ass. And then we get a full-on fist fight of Finn versus Captain Phasma. Fucking badass. Like a full-on brutal, I mean brutal fight. Like she pounds ever-loving shit out of Finn. She's like beating him. She, his nose bleeding. He, she's kicking the shit right out of him. Because she is a well-trained stormtrooper. Plus she has a lot of armor. Every time he's like punching her and stuff, it's not hurting her. She's throwing him across the room. It's basically a solid two and a half minutes of an ass kicking. It's pretty great. <laughs> you can see like Finn, his fucking face is bleeding. She like breaks one of his ribs. She like kicks the shit out of him. She like holds him up in the air, almost like suffocating him, holding him in the air. And she's like, This is what happens when you leave the First Order. You're nothing but a weak, a weak soldier. And all of a sudden, bam, you just see a blaster shot right at her head. And it's Han Solo. Bam, just shot her right in the fucking head. <laughs> and she falls to the ground dead. Finn's like, <gasps> Hansel stands over her. He's like, you okay, kid? She shows you more. You know, he's old as shit. He's still a bad ass. And he always shoots first. <laughs> and then we get Kylo Ren's ship landing. Ship opens he releases his lightsaber and he just goes right through all these troops. Like you see all these like resistance soldiers trying to go after him. He's like force throwing them, slicing them. Heads are coming off. It's fucking crazy. You get to see the power of just Kylo Ren against normal humans. He's flinging them across like ragdolls, slicing, gunning them. And then eventually gets to the base, goes to the back of the base and he sees Poe up in the air. just blasting, killing all his ships because he's fucking amazing. It's Poe. And all of a sudden, you see Kylo Ren use the Force and stops his ship and just brings it right fucking down. Just whoosh, boom. He rips the fucking window open and flings him right out. He's like all damaged from the crash and he's lifting him up in the air like he's like that fucking exorcist. <laughs> and he just says, where is the stormtrooper? And then he's just like, and he's like all oh, fucking bruised and everything. And all of a sudden you see a gunshot blast Kylo Ren in the back. And he's like, and then you see Finn with a blaster. He's like, I'm right here. Bam, bam, bam. He starts blasting and blasting. Chewbacca's behind him. He starts blasting. The two of them start going. Chewbacca's like, Ugh! they're both blasting. Kylo Ren's like dodging it with his lightsaber. It's fucking crazy, crazy. <laughs> And all of a sudden, he force pushes both of them, flings them both back. They will smack right into this fucking wall. Crazy shit. And then Kylo walks over, goes over to Finn's unconscious body, and then 
senses something in Finn. And he goes, interesting. I've never sensed this until now. He senses the force in Finn. He is Jedi sensitive. And he's like, hmm, we'll see about that. He holds his lights over there, and all you hear is, Ben! And then he looks over, sees his father, Han Solo. And then he look, turns over, sheets his lightsaber, puts it back, and he's like, Solo. And then Han Solo, we get this confrontation. He's like, I want to see my son. Not the man in the mask, my son. And then we get the first reveal, because the whole movie, Kylo Ren's got his helmet on. He takes his helmet off, throws it off, and you just see Adam Driver. And he's like, your son is dead. I am only Kylo Ren. There is no Ben. And then Han's like, I refuse to believe that. And then we get this very emotional scene of Han begging him to come home with him. Begging him. And then he's just like, Ben is just not having it. He's just kind of smiling. He's like, and he's trying so hard. He wants his son back so badly. And then he like even like hold, tries to get his hand and he's just like, I know you know. Like, I'm your father. There was a once a time you loved me and your mother. He's like, my son, and he like touches his heart. He's like, you're still in there. And then all of a sudden, Kylo Ren's like, he's like oh God, he's starting to feel something. He's like, no, and then he says, no. And he starts force choking Han Solo. He's like, oh. He's like trying to kill him. He's like, no, and he's just screaming, no. No! Then all of a sudden, once again, another interruption. It's like the third interruption in a row. Kylo just gets shot right in the fucking face by Finn. Just boom! With Han Solo's own blaster, blasts him right in the cheek, burning his entire skin off his cheek. Then shoots him again and burns him right there. He falls to the ground, face burning with all the laser blasts he shot him. He's just screaming in agony. Ah! Han Solo falls to the ground, barely can breathe, and then he runs to Han Solo, and he says, are you okay? And he's like, oh, I'm fine. And all of a sudden, all you, you always see is a bunch of these starships blowing everything up, everything's on fire, and then Finn's like, we have a job to do, let's do it now. Finn goes to the very top of the base, sees the control system, hacks the system that he was always learned how to taught he taught he was learning as a storm driver he learned how to hack systems he learned all about the plans and everything he hacks the system he shuts the death star down the death star that is going to destroy this planet and he says mission accomplished and then han solo and chewbacca get the fuck out of there they grab poe dameron they race out of there and then see all around these planets that the resistance has won they shut down every single Death Star. Nothing has been destroyed. The First Order has lost this battle. And you see stormtroopers taking Kylo Ren to a ship where his face is like half melted off by these blasters that Finn blasted him with. And all you see is him sweating and his eyes are beating red with rage. Like Anakin's eyes in Revenge of the Sith. And then we get a celebration. Like, this is good. This is... A win, just like in New Hope when they destroyed the Death Star. This is a win. They're celebrating. But he finally did it. And you get to see when they go back to the uh, Resistance. And Poe is in the hospital, very damaged, broken bones. But Leia says he'll be okay and stuff. And Finn, Finn's been through a lot, man. He's learned so much. And he, he's scared, but he conquered his fear. He's feared Kylo Ren, but he took him on head to head. And then Leia talks to him and she says, this is the coordinations. I just spoke to Luke. He would like to see you. She gives him the coordinations to uh, a planet where Luke is training Jedi Knights. And Finn's like, thank you. And then Leia's like, no, thank you, Finn. May the force be with you. And then Han Solo stops him. He's a like, kid. And then he says, thank you for saving my life. And then Finn's like, thank you for saving my life. And then he says, and then he, he's like, take the Millennium Falcon. And he's just like, what? He's like, 
He's like, I'm not giving it to you. He says, but take it. She's the fastest ship in the galaxy. She'll get you there safe. And then he's like, Chewie, go with him. And then Chewie's like, arr, arr. and then Chewie and Finn take the Millennium Falcon, ship off to Luke Skywalker. Then we get this scene of Leia and Han Solo, very beautiful. She's like, holds him. And then she says, she's like, are you okay? He's like, no, I'm not okay. And she says, you tried. You tried your best. She says, but our son is still in there. And then Han's like, he is not in there. Our son is dead. And then Leia puts her head down. And they just, like, hold each other. Just these parents, they just, their son is gone. He's lost to the dark side. And then we get Kylo Ren coming back. You get to see Kylo Ren all fixed up, his face all burnt. And he's talking to Snow. And he goes into his room, uh, to one of these rooms and talks to Snoke. And Snoke's like, you failed me, Kylo. And then he's like, it was my fault. He's like, it was a cheap shot what he did. And he's just like, he's like, maybe. I and then Snoke's like, maybe I've been too soft on you. He says, maybe your training wasn't hard enough. He says, I'm going to come. He's like, you're going to meet me at this planet where I'm at. And he says, I'm going to make you. A more powerful Sith Lord. He's like, there is still love and pure and lightness in you. And he says, time to get rid of that. And then Kylo Ren's like, I will be the most powerful Sith Lord in the world. Even more powerful than you, my master. <laughs> and Snoke smiles. He's like, we'll see about that. And then when he leaves, General Hux comes to Kylo Ren and just yells at him. He says, this is your fault. We failed. We failed. We had the resistance. We failed. We lost this war. And then Kyle's like, this war is far from over. And then he says, just because you're Snoke's little pet doesn't mean you can't take responsibility. And it doesn't mean I'll be your little lapdog. And then he's like, careful, General. Careful what you're speaking to. And he's like, careful who you're speaking to. Know your allegiance. Know your ranking officers. And Kyle Ren just grabs a laser and stabs right through fucking General Hux. And General Hux is like, oh. He's just like, like I said, careful, General. <laughs> he slices right through him, kills General Hux just like that. Doesn't care. I don't, he don't get, Kyle Ren don't give a fuck about no ranks. <laughs> and then he leaves. And then the ending scene is, uh, Finn and Chewbacca going to this planet. Fine, it could be the planet even at the end of Force Awakens where Luke is. You see this little Jedi temple. You see like some kids, a couple kids running around, and you just see people and stuff. And then when they land, this young teenager is a Jedi Padawan, one, and he says, "How may I help you?" And then Finn's like, "I'm here to see Luke Skywalker." And then he's like, "Right this way." And then you go into the temple, you see all these, like, architectures, Jedi statues. You could see, like, a statue of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda and Anakin Skywalker. And you just see Luke with young students talking to them, talking to them about the history of the Jedi and everything. And then this teenager says, Master Skywalker, there's someone here to see you. Luke looks over, sees Finn and Chewbacca, smiles, he says, class dismissed for now. And he goes over and he's like, Chewie! And then Chewie gives Luke a hug. And then he's like, he's like, he's like, you know where, you know where the food is. And then Chewie goes and, then, and he says, I have felt you for a little bit now. And Finn's like, I'm sorry. He's like, I can feel the force within you. And then Finn's like, what, what, what are you talking about? And Luke's like, you don't know, do you? Finn's like, know what? He's like, you're a Jedi Knight. And Finn's like, oh, don't be ridiculous. I'm not a Jedi. I'm just a stormtrooper who just didn't want to be a stormtrooper no more. He's just like, I sense it in you. The Force has awakened in you. And Finn's like, I, I, I don't know. I just, I just want my family. I want my past. I, I want my future back. I want my life back. He's like, can you help me? And looks like, I can help you. And then that's how the movie ends. Cuts to black. End of the movie. End of the Force Awakens. <laughs> um, sorry if the the story was a bit scattered. I'm not like the best at storytelling and stuff, but 
that was my little pitch idea for my Force Awakens movie. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. That's how I would have written, written Force Awakens. Um, if you guys want to see a sequel, I'll do it. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section below and let me know what you thought about it. And let me know what some of your issues were, what are things you would have changed and stuff. There's a lot of scenes also I had to cut through. Like there's some other scenes that obviously are going to last longer and everything. But that was my pitch. Hope you all enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe to this channel and join the dark side.